Okay, good evening. Today is March 14th, 2022. Uh, this is a um, regular meeting of the Board of Education. Uh, Mr. Kasson could not make it this evening, so I'm going to be filling in for him. Um, so I have a motion to open. Lori? Second. Cynthia? All in favor? So we were now um, going... Oh, no, I did. I raised. You did raise? I was too fast. Um, so. We are now going to enter into executive session to discuss some um, personnel and legal matters. So can I have a motion to enter into executive session? Lori? Second, Cynthia. All in favor? And we will return 730. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't know where to start. Are we starting? Yeah. Well, she went to Italy without your dad. Okay. Good evening and welcome. Um, we just got back from executive session, so we've already opened the meeting and we adjourned in executive session. So we're just going to go right into our Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. So welcome everyone here and everyone at home. Um, so we're going to start with uh, some comments by the board. Uh, Cynthia, do you want to start? Um, I wanted to start with, I don't know, I mean, obviously I hope everybody got to see the Into the Wood show because the production was just amazing. It was almost like being at a Broadway production. I mean, it was just incredible between the students, the staff that helped do it, the music, the lighting. I mean, I was just... I couldn't believe it. So, like, kudos to everybody who really put the work in, and it was just an amazing show. I wish I had bought another ticket to go see it again, but it was really incredible. Great, thank you. So. Oh, me, okay. Um, a couple of things, I just wanted to go back to the last meeting and to let everybody know that I'm still on cloud nine from those little sweetie pies that came up and did their thing for us at the last board meeting they were wonderful and i would love to see more of that with our little ones to show what they're doing um, and for everyone to get to see what what little ones learn in school they were amazing and thank you to their parents for um, bringing them out to share with us it was pretty incredible and also no mask i'm just sitting here without a mask on i just wanted to say Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully we can stay on this trend and we won't have to pivot back to that. Okay. Oh, oh you're that's right. it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know you're done. Oh, okay. Um, so I don't really have any comments other than I don't know if this is a national thing or if it was in my hospital. Is it gratitude week? So they, is that a made-up thing? It could there be. is gratitude week. At Yale New Haven it's Health right. System last week was gratitude week, and that made yeah, me we think. Do, <laughs> yeah, we do gratitude do, week. I'm not do sure. You, I'm like, is this a hallmark <laughs> thing? I never have any idea, but I, they do have it on every screensaver. They want you to know you're supposed to be expressing your gratitude. So I would just like to say that I'm very grateful to sit on this board with all of you, with Pete as well. He's not here. I'm grateful the, for the administration and for all of the people that work here in the district staff faculty building level administration um, it's really a great place there's a lot of good stuff going on i think we've seen that through the workshops i'm incredibly grateful and i'm so grateful my three children are reaping the benefits of this education yes so thank Agreed. you Agreed. okay i'll just um echo what uh Cynthia already said, but um, went to the play, and it was um, phenomenal. Actually, I brought this because I just want to just spend a, a couple minutes just thanking. It was, now I've been to plays, Broadway, and a lot of family that are in theater, so over the years I've been to so many different shows. I have to say, this could have been an off-Broadway show. And oh, not, wow. No exaggeration. Yeah. It was from the sound effects to the orchestra to the, to the performance of each each person on that stage one was uh, more spectacular than uh, they're all spectacular so um, I just I was blown away um, as Cynthia said and I, I really do think we have such a we, we need to hi like bring them in right uh, Dr. Um, highlight you know uh, Mr. Deschateau and his wife Bryn 
amazing. Um, Dr. Mosier, who was retiring, so that was her last show. So it was very sweet at the end. She thanked everybody, and then she had a list of all the shows since 94. She's right. been doing it. Um, and her husband does the uh, technical stuff. So I just want to give a shout-out to all of the, the staff that just ran this. It is a tremendous, tremendous amount of work, and you could see in every detail in that show um, and the orchestra, those kids' violins for hours and hours and hours, and perfect. So I was just, I can't, I can't tell you how proud. It was, there was not a dry eye, let's just say. At the end of that show, when Dr. Mosier was giving the roses out, those kids and the appreciation. Aww. And the last thing I'm going to say, I'm just a little long, but I just want to finish with saying, Friday night I was not at the show. I went to the last show, but my oh, son yes. went. Okay. And he was telling me how every single, and this is, this is a testimony to a small district. I'm going to cry. But every single kid that went to that show in his packed house stood at the doorway and waited for mm -hmm. every single person to come out from the pit to the to the stage crew to every actor and actress to hug them and cheer oh, them. That's it was wonderful. on. Yep. I that's mean, we great. really do have such a. So I just want to celebrate that tonight and appreciate. And thank you. And so that's my comment. Even you thank know you what to I everybody. was just thinking when you said that. I was thinking. Um, I've seen it on Good Morning America because you said off Broadway, and what, every now and again they'll highlight a sh uh, one of the Broadway shows, and they do like a little snippet. Yeah. Yeah. during the show right. so maybe one day they could come oh, here, here that's what, yeah. to a board meeting we were talking about that yeah. and do a little do you snippet know somebody right at good morning mm -hmm. america no, I just no, saw it on TV. <laughs> we are good. We're good night. No. Yeah, <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, <laughs> but, but maybe they could do like a uh, yeah. little snippet, bef you know, yeah. during the, what we open up, and then they just come and do it like a small part. That might be different. Yeah. I just want, I just like Teres was saying, like uh, we, I just think we should highlight all of the great things mm -hmm. that our there's district. So much more good. It, yeah, yeah so there's much. a lot more good than not, and I just think when, whenever we have a chance to really demonstrate what our students are doing and all of the great things that our administration and teachers and support staff are doing yeah. I think we should take every opportunity right. to do that so it's just an idea yeah, and those teachers that you know yeah. stayed late and worked hard on that exactly was, yeah. it's a yeah. hard show by the way and so it's a really really tough wow. and they pulled it off perfectly that's so great. awesome yeah. okay congratulations <laughs> thank you um, dr. Goodman you want to introduce the students yes so um, just to go back to what Lori and all, all the other board members have said when we were walking in we were talking about having them come here Mm -hmm. you know, different students to perform and actually uh, Mr. Duchateau had mentioned that to me oh, great. before this board meeting actually he said he could have somebody at this board meeting but I thought we were so packed I said okay. we should do it at the next board meeting mm -hmm. okay, because good. we have the whole budget presentation yeah. but we're very lucky we because see. tonight we have one of the cast members Yay. who just happens to be our student representative oh, okay. Nora Shell Podal and she was the witch she was the witch. and okay. into the woods so oh, yeah. I oh, my God. amazing amazing uh, so amazing. Nora is a senior at Tuckahoe High School and has been attending Tuckahoe School since kindergarten Nora has consistently achieved high grades throughout high school and is currently taking four AP classes Nora has been a member of the National Honor Society, maintaining academic ex excellence, while she also performs in our strings, playing in the cello. Throughout the years, Nora has received multiple awards, including the Frederick Douglass and Susan B. Anthony Award from the University of Rochester. On the ACT, she scored very high. Um, with these scores and such an impressive academic record, as of right now, Nora has been accepted into five colleges, which she all wants to go to, and um, <laughs> she has to make some decisions. I think she's waiting for two more. Um, Ithaca College, New, New Jersey Institute of Technology, and Rochester Institute of Technology, and has received over $100,000 in merit scholarships in total. That is uh, terrific. Wow. Um, outside of academics, Nora is a person with very diverse interests. Nora volunteers with Endeavor Therapeutic Horsemanship, the Bronx River Conservation Application Association, I'm sorry, and the Tuckahoe Police Explorers. A scout, a scout in the Boy Scouts of America, Nora expects to receive their Eagle rank in June. Nora is the editor of the high school yearbook and has participated in the club for years and has also contributed creative writing to the Images magazine. Nora is also the captain of the track and field team and is ranked number five in the section for shot pot. Last weekend, as you know, Nora starred as the witch in our production of Into the Woods and has been a part of numerous other productions. Nora? 
Thank you, Dr. Goodman. I know, as you mentioned, I speak for myself and many other members of the cast when I say we would be happy to come and give you all a snippet of our show. We are all so very proud of it. Uh, as mentioned, this past weekend we all enjoyed uh, this year's Tuckahoe Middle School and High School musical production of Into the Woods. Um, it was great to once again see the students performing in person. This past Saturday, Tuckahoe Middle School competed in the Lower Hudson Valley Regional Science Olympiad competition at Scarsdale Middle School against 26 other teams in 20 different events. Tuckahoe Middle School earned 10 medals in total. Overall, one Tuckahoe Middle School team placed 9th out of 28, earning a trophy for our school, and our second team placed 12th out of 28. Habitat for Humanity recently assisted the Fuller Center Fuller Center with demolition at the American Legion in Thornwood, New York. The lower level of the building was damaged during Hurricane Ida. Students worked alongside the American Legion commander, his wife, and a fellow veteran. The marching band performed in the St. Patrick's Day Parade this past Sunday. And this past week was our first week returning to our regular cafeteria, cafeteria seating. Uh, the College Cafe has been up and running. This week, the guidance counselors will be working with our juniors on their resumes. Thank you. Thank you. And our next student speaker is Andrew Reichelt. He is a senior at Tucko High School. Andrew presents himself as a role model to his peers through his service to others and participation in extracurricular activities. Andrew has various accomplishments that stand out. He, he also participates in our strings program and has for all four, four years where he plays cello and has maintained over a 3.3 GPA average in the classroom. He has taken three AP classes over his high school career. With those scores and achievement, Andrew has been accepted into seven colleges and counting, such as St. John Fisher, Sequana University, and St. John's University. Outside of the classroom, Andrew participates in many extracurricular activities. Andrew is a Boy Scout and on his way to becoming an Eagle Scout, a lifeguard at Lake, Lake Isle, and a volunteer ambulance corps member in town. Athletically, Andrew was captain of our varsity football team, our winning team, and a member of our <coughs> Springs track program. <coughs> Overall, Andrew's achievement, both on the academic and, and the extracurricular level, reflect a hardworking, caring and determined student. Andrew? Thank you. So uh, on March 5th, the varsity girls basketball team won section one championship for the first time in school history. Wow. Uh, the following Tuesday, I'm the following Tuesday on March 8th, they went up to um, Yorktown and they lost in the regional semifinals to Millbrook. Coach Andrew Colaswano was named Coach of the Year. The varsity basketball team, the boys basketball team, completed, competed in the semifinals of Class C and lost to Hamilton. The team is looking forward to next year with many returning players. Five members of the bowling team competed at sectionals. Our competitive cheer team achieved third place in the sectionals. Our pioneer team competed, <coughs> me. completed full hockey and will start next week with basketball. All varsity sports will start March 14th, today, and modified sports will start March 21st. Our spring sports include varsity baseball, varsity softball, varsity boys and girls track and field, JV baseball, JV girls lacrosse, modified baseball, softball, and track. Okay, thank you. That was great. Um, so now we're going to do comments, uh, Dr. Goodman. Okay, before I do the budget, I have a couple of things to talk about. And first, I also wanted to comment on our musical Into the Woods by Stephen Hot Sondheim. The theater club put on four performances over this past weekend, and it really was something that was truly amazing. The best I have ever seen in a high school, and I've seen a lot of shows. 
This show was extremely challenging to perform and our students rose to a level that exceeded, again, any high school production. These students were performing really on a professional level, as many of the board members said. <coughs> Thanks to Kathy Mosier, who directed her 27th musical for the school. Her husband, Andrew, is a professional lighting designer and handled all the technical elements. The show's music director was our strings teacher, Charles Duchateau, who has a long career on Broadway. He also was assisted by his wife, Britt, who has worked on Into the Woods two different times with the composer himself. Uh -huh. So our students were learning this amazing show one degree away from Stephen Sondheim himself. That's great. Also, thanks to our other advisors who helped out, Melanie Buchanan, who handled choreography, and Jeannie Whelan, who assisted in vocal coaching. Outstanding job to all students on stage, behind the stage, and of course, the amazing orchestra who sat below the stage. I've never seen such a great orchestra also. It was an epic achievement by everyone involved. Evidence of teamwork, extremely hard work, and social emotional learning was on display in our auditorium this past weekend. I would say this past weekend was a great example of what the arts can do for our students and for our community. I know everyone who was lucky enough to see it agrees. Thank you. I also want to talk about something that's going to be on the agenda later, which I'm sure I know the board's going to talk about too. But today, we will vote on the MOA for the contract for our teachers. And we express our gratitude through that to our teachers, and we want to extend our thanks for all you do. Your dedication to your students makes an impact far greater than you will ever know. Your patience, caring, creativity, and flexibility makes this approval, which I hope it will be, a vote of confidence. You truly believe in your students, and knowledge of your belief in them inspires them each and every day, just as you saw some children today. They were great examples of that, and the students you've seen at the workshops also. We are proud to stand with you in all you do to meet the diverse needs of your students and their families. Your work is the lifeblood of our school, and you make a difference in students' lives. As teachers, and I say teachers, everybody in the TTA contract, the um, support staff also, you face a myriad of challenges that appreciation alone, appreciation alone will not reduce. That's why us working with you and our joint advocacy for our students and our teachers is something that this board really values. Your commitment to your students deserve recognition, and we hope you understand tonight how much we appreciate the work you've been doing. Again, the board and I are appreciative and thank you for our teachers and so are our administration and all our related service providers. You got us through two unprecedented years, as we keep on saying, and I think Tucko really did the best job of it and helped us shine. Thank you for leading the way. Many times I say Tucko leads the way, but it really is what goes on in the classroom. So thank you very much. Thank you. Now for a budget presentation. Okay. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. We have teachers here tonight. We have our school board. I know our families are watching at home, and our administrators are here tonight. And, our, and I thank our school community for watching. This is an important meeting. Tonight, we will expand on the preliminary budget presented in February. This will be the second in a series of presentations detailing our budget plans for the next year. I am joined this evening by Ms. Faith Sparks, business manager. Today's presentation is the product of a close collaboration with our director of curriculum, Mr. Christopher Keough, director of special education, Dr. Kate Sweeney, and WEC building administrators, Mr. John Marash, principal, Mr. Peter Kogalan, assistant principal, and Takahoa Middle School and High School building administrators, Dr. Bart Linehan, principal, and assistant principals, Mr. Scott DeBellis and Mr. Paul Tobin. Over the past few Board of Ed workshops, we have highlighted the results of previous budget priorities. Whether it's the caring and responsive co-teach classrooms, the district's innovative STEAM programs, or our district's multifaceted evidence-based reading program, or our new sports clubs or extracurriculars. Our community invests in our students' well-rounded educational experience. 
Tonight begins with a look at the Taco Union Free School District, our mission, vision, points of pride, and our students' achievements. To put the proposed budget in context, I will first discuss the variables and drivers of our proposed budget. I will present the enrollment and sections based on current projections and highlight proposed changes in funding for curriculum, extracurriculars, technology, and facilities. Lastly, I will conclude with an opportunity for a discussion. Let's begin with a look at our school district. All work is driven by a very specific mission to prepare every student for excellence. We are motivated by three specific goals that undergird our strategic plan and steer the work of our leadership team. To enhance academic performance for success in college placements, career pathways, and global citizenship. To build and foster strong relationships between our district and the community we serve and to ensure fiscal responsibility and sustainability. All our district-wide efforts, and we have uh, presented on this before, are organized around the four pillars of our strategic plan. And all our goals that we recently presented, maybe at the beginning of the year, were also were around this plan. Investments should promote social learning, further contemporary teaching and learning strategies, meet the diverse needs of learners, and provide professional learning to build the capacity of our tremendous staff in accomplishing the ambitious goals we have set forth. In the next few slides, I detail the ways our students achieve, compete, and impress. There are many points of pride in our small district, and the first few slides will be the sampling of these exciting accomplishments. Tuckahoe students achieve. And because of the things with which our district prides ourselves, we see our students achieve. Over the next few slides, we will highlight our students, demonstrating the way in which our investments in the school district pay dividends. These are just samplings. We would meet, need a much longer presentation to highlight all the small wins, all the kind gestures, and all the moments of collaboration, support, and ingenuity that make up the tapestry of student achievement at Tuckahoe. In academics, our students celebrate acceptances to many top colleges, which are right on this, on this slide. More than 90% of our graduates move on to a four-year or two-year college or university. Not only do our students achieve academically, they soar in all venues. For example, in the fall, we saw our, fall, uh, we saw our football team win their sectional championship led by class CD coach of the year. Our girls' soccer team was also led by their respective coach of the year to a Class C championship. Meanwhile, our volleyball team soared championship wins and an undefeated season for our JV athletes. And our cross-country team had five athletes qualify for states. And this was only the fall. Tuckahoe students do compete. Tuckahoe students also ride. Rise. Meanwhile, our girls' basketball team celebrated the most wins by a girls' basketball team in school history and celebrated our first sectional championship. We, are we were so excited to welcome back our cheerleading team after a four-year hiatus. Our cheerleaders came back strong and celebrated three first-place comp competition finishes. Our modified bo boys' baseball team, this is last year, but I we haven't started yet this year, ended the se season with a 9-1 overall record. Our bowling team saw five bowlers qualify for sectionals, and our pioneer team of our life skills um, students competed a season in floor hockey and is off to a great start. And basketball is next for them. This year, we were excited to, again, as I said before, celebrate the return of varsity competitive chair, but also JV girls lacrosse. We also welcomed a modified boys lacrosse and a cross country team. And Taco students do impress. Our debate team is on a roll. N new this year, this team has succeeded and made a name for Tuckahoe students. Taco Middle School joined a highly competitive debate league called the New York Debate League, NYDL. Our students prepared vigorously by researching information to both sides, opposition or proposition of a debate, preparing concise and detailed oriented speeches, and practicing the use of appropriate public speaking skills. Select students have been chosen to participate in championship tournament at the Dalton School in New York City on April 30th. This will be Tuckahoe Middle School students' first competition ever competing in a championship. 
This past weekend, as I said before, we were delighted by the middle school high school performance of Into the Woods, and we look forward to the elementary school performance of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. <coughs> our spirited school performers help to make art come to life on the stage, and we appreciate the community supports of these endeavors. Our Habitat for Humanity Club has rolled up its sleeves to help restore local homes and buildings. We are so impressed by our students' desire to give back to the communities. They've learned invaluable skills and made a real difference in the lives of families in Westchester. Meanwhile, our Tiger Bites is open. This is again a life skills program and our students are learning the ins and outs of operating a small business. This year, now finally, they're delivering foods again to the offices directly. And Taco Students Amaze. Our Tucko students amazed in academics and volunteerism. Our middle school science Olympiad team took home 10 medals for their work in inquiry and experimentation. Meanwhile, our high school science Olympiad team brought home gold medals in anatomy and physiology. Our students' performance received accolades as well. Fabian Duchateau played upright bass for the New York State NISMA All-State Symphony Orchestra, and Yuri Lee was awarded for the Carsons Academic Scholar Award for her strong academics and community service. Meanwhile, our National Honor Society continued to contribute to the community through events like their food drive and coat drive. And just to highlight again that our Tuckahoe students perform. We know that our, our sports have been excellent, but so are our arts. Our Tuckahoe students are master performers, and our high-level arts program helps our students succeed, excel, and grow. Thank you to the community for their investments in this program because we believe that it is a program also that enriches our communities with the sound of music, the visuals of artwork, and the excitement of their performances. This weekend, you may have been dazzled by the middle school high school performance of Into the Woods or cheered on our Tucko Tigers marching band at the East Chester St. Patrick's Day Parade, which they led, or seen their art on our walls, on our school media sites, our website, or even in your home. Tucko students are performers and artists. Participation in our senior inter program, internship program has skyrocketed, skyrocketed to the point where almost 95% of our seniors take an internship in their final year of school. We believe this program is invaluable to them to give them a taste of the working world and also valuable to our community. Tuckahoe students learn and contribute. And Tuckahoe schools prepare. This year, Tuckahoe schools worked hard to prepare our students for success. This included data teams and analysis of benchmark assessments and monitoring student progress. This year entailed training and coaching in the use of iReady software, as well as connections to existing data. Next year, we plan to continue building on this foundation with increased technology training in the use of databases to inform instruction. We also continued our implementation of foundations in grades K-2, to and this expanded to our third grade. This was supported by training and coaching from a consultant and the purchase of materials and intervention kits. Our students continue to build a strong base in decoding during the formative years of learning to read. Additionally, our school district developed the Tuckahoe Learning Center in partnership with the Tuckahoe Village Library and the East Chester Community Action Partnership. This was offered to students who needed additional support on homework and other areas of struggle. This was funded through our federal grants to help address learning loss. We continue to strengthen the bridges between fifth and sixth grade. This involved a curriculum project spearheaded by a team of teachers in both the middle and elementary school in area of grammar, in the area of grammar, and the rollout of new envisions math materials, and the training of elementary school staff in Science 21. Our teachers are often recognized for their accomplishments in the field of teaching. Whether it's the middle school, high school teachers being recognized by the New York State Reading Association, or Ms. Melanie Buchanan recognized as a master teacher in the field of STEM by the New York State Education Department, the investments our supportive community continues to make in our district pays off in dividends. This year, we also celebrated numerous Coaches of the Year awards. We are fortunate to have such talented professionals working with our students. We will now shift to our proposed budget. 
Before looking at some of the changes, we will explore the variables and drivers that impacted our decision making in developing this proposal. Here you will see some of the known variables driving the proposed budget. These will be discussed in details by Ms. Sparks. The tax cap is calculated using a formula set by New York State using growth factors that the district has no control over. The 2022-2023 maximum allowable tax levy under the tax cap is 2.10%. Retirement system contributions, a percent of employees' salaries determined by New York State. Next year, the employer contribution rates for TRS will increase from 9.8 to 10.29, that's the teacher's retirement, and ERS for the civil service will decrease from 16.2 to 11.6. Health insurance premiums are increasing 1.5% to 3%. Fund balance utilization. This is the, the use of the district's savings to balance the budget. The amount needed for the proposed 2022-2023 budget is, presented, is projected to be 30% less the amount, than the amount needed for the 21 and 22 budget. So we are going in the right direction. State aid, right now the district is working with the governor's executive budget proposal, which consists of two types of aid. Foundation aid, which is increasing 37.54, which increased 37.54 over 21 and 22, and expense-driven aids, which is BOCES, transportation, and special ed high-cost aid. In the governor's budget, total state aid is, project, is projected to increase only 887000 or 26.4% next year. This district awaits the final budget after discussions between legislature and the executive office. There are known variables about curriculum, including new sections, standards, and strategies. These known variables are linked to our contemporary teaching and learning efforts and are woven into this plan. You'll see that in our proposed, proposed reading programs, training, and extracurricular um, offerings. We continue to invest in technology. This year, this means investments in new projection boards and Chromebook purchases to support our one-on-one -on -one initiative and debt service. The increase in debt service of 14.5% as 22-23 is the year of debt service for the 2018 capital project. It's the first year of debt service. Here are some unknown variables that Ms. Sparks will also detail. These include enrollment, special education, non-tax revenues, and collective bargaining unit settlements. We might have a little more information on that after tonight. Next, we will look at enrollment and number of sections. I'll also share some details of our investigation into class size research and policy. These represent the changes in enrollment and sections at Cottle. As you can see, the numbers are remaining constant in our current projections. As a result, there are no staffing or section changes in the elementary school. Similarly, despite a boost in enrollment in the middle school, there are no changes to the number of sessions or staff required. Lastly, since high school courses are more varied and plentiful, we don't just look at enrollment when considering staffing needs for the next year. As of now, there are no major changes in enrollment, but we will be proposing additional staff to help broaden our options and learning pathways for our high school students. Now a note about class size. This year, the board has a goal to look at class size, and my leadership team have discussed class size also. We are a district that prides itself on small class size. Overall, the research does support smaller class sizes. While the research around class size is complicated due to confounding variables, such as smaller class sizes are seen in wealthier communities who have other advantages in terms of what they can offer students. One randomized study, which is the gold standard of research, found that students randomly assigned to a small class generally experienced increased student achievement by an amount equivalent to three additional months of schooling. In this study, the size of these smaller classes were 22 students, which was a reduction in the study of almost 32%, or seven students. Policy experts often advocate for smaller class size. For example, the National Education Policy Center finds broad support that important determination of student outcomes is class size, and the Brookings, Brookings Institute also advocates for smaller class size, although this definition is relative to region. Opponents to small class size policies should suggest that decreasing class size and opening more sessions, sessions run you the risk of being forced to hire less competitive 
staff, resulting in more inexperienced teachers. However, large-scale policy initiatives have not seen this impact. So um, I, I went over this because a board goal was to look at class size, and I think it's important to know the research. So for this presentation, I did put this in. Here's a look at our average class sizes in 21-22. These counts include general education classes only and does not include the small special classes. Um, so for example, Cottle has 27 homerooms and the middle school, high school has 120 core subject sections represented in this average. In the first column, you'll see the average class size at Cottle is 19 at the middle school high school where the average class size is 18. Now, of course, we have some larger classes, but that is our averages, which are very good. Budget additions and subtractions. We now move to the budget additions and subtractions. With our enrollment stable and our strategic plan in full swing, we are looking to build on the positive. The changes in curriculum at the elementary school have all been detailed in our previous workshop which I encourage everyone to check out if they haven't already. After analysis, an analysis of different programs and a pilot of another, we will be moving to the Reading Wonder, it's really called the Wonders Program in the 2023 school year. This will run alongside our current foundational literacy program. Additionally, there are a number of resources to support a multi-tiered system of support. This includes a site license for the iReady Teacher Toolbox which is a digital collection of whole class of small group instructional resources, resources to both target gaps and provide enrichment. The DIBLs are running record assessments will allow us to continue monitoring and tracking students' growth and literacy, and the Alexia Learning Platform will provide an easily accessible and differentiated intervention resource. Meanwhile, at the middle and high school, curriculum changes are focused on materials. We will be purchasing new middle school social study textbook for the sixth graders that will tie in better with the seventh and eighth grade curriculum, strengthening our scope and sequence. Meanwhile, with changes in science standards, we are requesting new biology textbooks. These will be updates to our current Miller-Levine texts and include blended print and digital materials. Lastly, we have a new offering in our financial literacy program. This will be spearheaded by our own principal, Dr. Linehan, and will include a series of budget-neutral seminars hosted by middle school, high school staff and Dr. Linehan himself on the topic of financial literacy. For students interested and able to take it to the next level, we will pay for seats in the Bloomberg Market Concepts course, which is a self-paced e-learning course that provides an interactive introduction to the financial markets. Overall, a modest increase to support a bold and progressive program at the middle and high school. In upcoming slides, I will detail how extracurriculars and professional learning will further opportunities for students. We are excited that interest in these areas has led us to requesting its inclusion in next year's budget. Our Science Olympiad team is growing in leaps and bounds. And really, I go by their classroom a lot of times in the afternoon, and they, there's a lot of kids in it, and they're working very hard. And they just celebrated wins in a number of categories at a recent competition. Next year, we want to expand this program. We also want to start a quiz bowl team that can represent our district at different academic challenges. Lastly, the coding club at the high school has been so successful that we want to make sure we can offer it to our middle school students. Additionally, as presented at previous workshops me workshop meetings, we will be continuing our college, our new college cafe. And this we're going to put in the budget for next year. This will help our students navigate the intricate college admissions process and provide our students with another resource to help them succeed. This year, we explored professional learning partnerships that can help our teachers' impressive toolkits. Mr. Keogh and I and Mr. Keogh and Dr. Linehan spoke to um, consultants and also uh, local districts and representatives from this consulting group. And we are excited to offer a summer institute with follow-up coaching throughout the year on the learner active technology-infused classroom model. This approach has teachers developing authentic units around felt needs and real world problems. Students then construct their learning pathways with different options designed by the teacher. Students take charge in this model and it is a paradigm shift that requires support. 
This model has been shown to be really challenging to students to take responsible for their own learning and construct meaning. Changes in staffing. Here you will see our previously mentioned changes in staffing. Next year we plan to add a course in statistics at the high school. This will complement the learning journey of our students who accelerated algebra in the eighth grade and are interested in graduating with an in-depth understanding of statistics. Research heavily values this course offering with many mathemat mathematicians preferring it to calculus. We are also adding a supervisor of special services to work closely with prevention and intervention for all students, students at risk, and assist the director of special ed. This position is important as we continue to address the long-lasting impact of COVID-19, and for that reason, we are using federal funds and some district funds for this next school year. Additionally, next year, we will offer two physics pathways, Regents Level and AP. We will also increase special education staffing to help support the needs of our learners. Ultimately, we are requesting an addition of 1.8 FTE total net staffing changes. In planning for changes in technology, we are entering a new installment purchase agreement with our local BOCES to fund the replacement of Chromebooks in grades three, six, and nine. As you know, these devices have undergone far more use than we could have ever anticipated, and our one-to-one -one program has kept student learning in these unpredict unpredictable times. We are also replacing aging smart boards with new interactive flat panels similar to the one we are presenting this slide deck on. As you know, this is an integral part, integral part of our technology plan as presented by Mr. Keo at previous workshop session. We are also requesting a new wide format printer, the one we are currently using for the last decade and we've been successful with, finally needs and is due for an update, upgrade. Additionally, we are investing in AV equipment so we continue to host our outdoor performances. And lastly, our district-wide wireless upgrade will replace current wireless equipment that has reached the end of life and end of service. It will provide state-of-the-art wireless access points throughout the district, which we really need. The project will be a one-time expenditure funded with prior year excess unreserved fund balance. Changes in furniture and equipment. To support contemporary teaching and learning, we plan to invest in new furniture for flexible learning. You'll see this in our new library and literacy center at Cottle and in classrooms of teachers participating in our summer institute to incorporate more learner active technology infused experience, experiences. We are also updating furniture in our middle school art room and investing in a fund for families who need access to musical instruments. We want to make sure that families who want their students, their children to play musical instruments have access to them because that can be expensive. These investments in innovative furniture will be funded with prior year's excess unreserved fund balance. The sum of these additions is an increase of 587600 to our budget. And you can see each of them and how much we are proposing to budget for that. Next, I will call on Ms. Faith Sparks, who will talk about fiscal, who will talk about fiscal responsibility. Good evening. The 22-23 budget summary, the proposed budget for 22-23 school year is $38,225,500. This is a percent increase of 3.52% or $1,298,900 over the 21-22 budget. The proposed tax levy increase of 2.10% is tax cap compliant. This equates to a tax levy increase of $625,352. To speak a little bit about the tax cap, in the last 10 years of the tax cap era, Tuckahoe's tax levy increase has averaged 1.92%. The tax cap is also known as the maximum allowable tax levy permissible under law, requiring a simple majority of 50% 50, 50 plus one voter approval for passage. It's based on a formula prescribed by New York State. Every school district in the state has its own unique tax cap number. It's not always 2%. When calculating the tax cap under the formula, District A could have a limit of 1%, District B could have a limit of 5%, and both be in compliance. 
There are two, th two growth factors in the New York State tax cap calculation that are set by New York State, the allowable levy growth factor, also known as CPI, and the tax base growth factor. The allowable levy growth factor calls for the lesser of 2% or CPI, the rate of inflation. Given that our current rate of inflation is much higher than 2%, the allowable levy growth factor for the calculation will be 2%. It can never be over that and never less than zero. We have, the district has no input or control over this factor. The second factor prescribed by the state when calculating the tax cap is the tax base growth factor. This information is provided by local assessors and is the determination of quantity change based on information that the assessors provide. It measures brick and mortar growth, new construction, and or significant additions to existing properties, increasing the tax base within the school district boundaries. It can never be zero and the minimum is 1.0. For 22-23, our district um, tax base growth factor is the minimum of 1.0. Other factors that play into the formula for the tax cap are pilot revenues, which are payments in lieu of taxes, capital and capital exclusions, which is our debt for capital projects, net of building aid. The preliminary maximum allowable tax levy for the 22-23 school year is 30,403,982, which is a 2.10% increase and $625,352 increase. This is the maximum amount the district can raise the levy without having to go to a supermajority vote. This slide is just a summary of the multi-step formula that the state provides. Um, in the state comptroller's portal, and it walks us through getting to our maximum allowable tax levy. Initial expenditures by budget function. The 2022-23 initial, pro initial proposed budget expenditure is 38,225,500. This is a 3.52% increase or $1,298,900. These numbers reflect the additions discussed by Dr. Goodman in the previous slides. The general support category is the first one on the list, and that includes costs related to Board of Education, the Superintendent's Office, the Business Office, Finance and Auditing, Personnel Office, Legal Expenses, Operation and Maintenance of Building, Central Data Processing, and special items such as dues, insurance, and refunds of real property tax taxes called tax tertiary. It also includes our district's portion of BOC, our local BOCES capital and administrative expenses. The budget to budget increase for this category is 6.9%. The largest drivers of this increase are the one-time use of a fund balance from the prior year, excess fund balance, to purchase um, the contemporary furniture that Dr. Goodman mentioned. We budget for it in our um, building lines and not in our instructional codes. Um, the other big driver in this code is the 21-22 school year um, is the last year of debt service on two tax tertiary bonds that we have, one from 2012 and one from 2015. That totals 180000 and so the budget proposes keeping that appropriation in the budget, but moving it to the line to pay for tax tertiaries, since we don't have the debt for them anymore for the old years. So this is just a reclassification of a expense that is in our budget. And this is in line with recommendations that the state comptroller made in our 2015 audit, where they recommend the digit district budget for tax refund reserves and potential tax tertiary expenses. The category of instruction includes costs for curriculum, professional development, instructional materials, principal's offices, general and special education, school library, audiovisual, technology expenses, guidance, psychologists, health services, co-curricular activities, and athletics. These increase 2.3% and include one-time expenses um, in the amount of $108,000, which is funded by the prior year excess fund balance for our wireless upgrade, and $41,000 for professional development. It also includes the staffing, curriculum, technology, and co-curricular additions discussed in the previous slides. The next category is pupil transportation, which is increasing 7.2%. Transportation contract increases are based on the May 2022 CPI, which is not out yet, so we're using estimates. 
The budget for employee benefits is estimated to increase by approximately 1.9%. Swiss CHIP had a small increase, um, but we offer two plans. Nice ship um, is increasing slightly more than that. Debt service has the largest budget to budget increase at 14.5%. This is net of the maturing tax or sherry bonds that I mentioned. The 2022-23 is the first year of debt service related to our 2018 capital project. The last category on the list is interfund transfers, which has an overall budget decrease of $20,000. This category includes transfer to special aid fund to fund our summer ESY program and transfer to our capital fund for capital improvements outside of large capital projects. This next slide shows our um, initial expenditure budget by function. Um, and you can see that our largest proportion of that is instruction, as we're a school district at 58%. And the second largest um, is employee benefits at 21%. Just a little note on tax tertiaries. Um, for most school districts, the town assessors are responsible for the valu valuations of properties. Tax tertiaries are proceedings that typically involve commercial landovers fighting their assessed value. Defending these challenges is often a long process and resolution could take years. The district has established a reserve for tax tertiary refunds. The balance in that reserve as of June 30, 2021 was $4,455,032. In the past, the district has issued debt to fund these refunds. The current budget includes um, 108 reclassing $180,000 in debt. Oh, the current budget includes $180,000 in debt service relating to two, two tax tertiary bonds. The proposed budget for next year includes keeping that same $180,000 appropriation, but instead of classifying it as debt service, we would move it to budget for refunds, um, for tax tertiary refunds. Sorry, next slide. Facilities and capital, an annual transfer from the general fund to our capital fund allows the district to make annual re renovations and upgrades to maintain and improve our buildings and grounds. This appropriation allows us to do capital work outside of large capital projects. The 2022-23 proposed budget requests the same level of funding as the 21-22 school year at $250,000. This next slide just shows our same initial expenditure budget, but by object. Um, the state classifies our expenses with functions and objects. So this will break it down by salaries, benefits, equipment, materials and supplies, contractual costs, um, which is our, um, includes legal expense, auditing, um, any other um, consultants that we bring into the district, tuition, not including BOCES, transportation, textbooks, and there's a line for BOCES, debt service, and interfund transfers. The next pie chart shows that salaries and benefits make up almost three quarters of our budget. Now on to our revenues. The real property taxes make up 79.5% of our budget. For 22-23, the maximum allowable tax levy is 2.10% higher than 21-22 and is tax cap compliant. The dollar amount increase in the proposed levy is $625,352. The next item on the category, the next category on the chart are pilots, which are payments in lieu of taxes and sales tax. 22-23 is the first year of the Marble Hall pilot at an estimated revenue of $389,600 and the ongoing pilot we have with the Tuckahoe Housing Authority at an estimated $51,000. The sales tax revenue budget for the current year, 21-22, of $425,000 was a conservative estimate based on un the unknown effects of the pandemic. For 22-23, the sales tax revenue budget is increased to $595,000 and is in line with trends. The charges for other services line includes non-resident tuition, uh, place, students placed by other public school districts or parentally placed. We are anticipating a slight decrease in this revenue. Other revenues include refund of prior year expenses, interest, and rental of real property. These items show a budget increase as the budget amounts are bringing more in line with actual trends that we're seeing. The governor's executive budget proposal for the 22-23 school year was released in January of 2022. 
This proposal is unlike any we've seen in the past 10 years, and it confirms the governor's commitment to fully funding foundation aid by fiscal year 2024. The 22-23 school year show, is projecting an increase in foundation aid of 37.54% or $667,635. The proposed budget includes also an increase of building aid, which is mostly related to the aid for our 2018 capital project, which will help offset the new debt related to that project. Overall, state aid is projected to increase 887,000 or 26.4%. The state has also committed to the continuation of funding for universal pre-K. Um, universal pre-K is not part of our general fund budget, um, but it is in the governor's proposal, and we're all really excited about that. So that will continue. The federal aid budget is $5,000 higher than 21-22. This line item is for Medicaid reimbursement, which is related to certain special education services that we get from the federal government. This brings our total revenue budget to 36864972 The law requires us to have a balanced budget. In order to get there, we must close the gap. The 22-23 budget includes a revenue of appropriated fund balance of $1,360,528 to close this gap. This number includes $246,362 from the prior year, 2020-21, surplus of unreserved fund balance where we were over the 4%. But in total is $604,895 less than the 21-22 school year, which is a reduction of 30.8%. This chart shows um, our initial, um, I'm sorry, it says expenditure, but it's revenue budget. Uh, by category, you could see that uh, real property taxes make up almost 80% of our revenues. So where does this leave us? with initial re expenditure budget of $38,225,500 and a revenue budget of $38,864,000. We have $864,972. We have a budget gap of $1,360,528. How do we close this gap? We could increase the tax levy, utilize fund balance, or cut expenses. Historically, the district has used appropriated fund balance to balance the budget, and that is what's proposed in this budget. This is just a slide of our appropriated fund balance for balancing the budget um, going back to 2015-16. And you can see that the proposed 22-23 budget is in line with the goal of reducing our reliance on appropriated fund balance. This last chart is it's just a, um, a chart of our tax levy and budget history. So the orange bar is our total budget. The gray bar shows our total tax levy and the black line shows the percent of the levy increase um, going back to 2018-19 and it's pretty steady and consistent. Thank you, Ms. Sparks, that was very informative. Thank you for the opportunity to share our preliminary budget conversation. A budget is a reflection of the district values and we believe this captures the following highlights. Our budget focuses on our diverse students, students who need support, those who strive and are served by this budget, and its emphasis on new interventions, new programs based in research with opportunities for differentiation and post-secondary support through the College Cafe. This budget builds and strengthens our support system for learners, for those who also thrive. We are looking for opportunities to challenge themselves and they're also well served by this budget proposal. We see investments in academic clubs like our science Olympiads, coding, and in intervention trivia teams. To promote contemporary teaching and learning, we will train teachers over the summer in the learner, active, technology-infused classroom. We will also be rolling out new learning experiences and financial literacy and the Bloomberg Market Essentials and a new statistics course and the return of regents level physics. All the while, we will build on the foundation of reading instruction cultivated in the elementary school where students learn the explicit skills of reading. It is critical that schools and districts offer explicit, ex explicit systematic instruction and foundational literacy skills to all students, not just students who struggle. All students need this instruction, and it helps all students become better readers. We are proud that this value underlies our work as a district, and the budget continues to support that. We look forward to presenting any developments in the week ahead. The budget will be adopted 
on April 19th, and the community will be asked to vote on May, May 17th. I welcome any questions. Um, administrators are here tonight, too, to help. Uh, any questions that you have about the preliminary budget. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's great. All right. Thank you, Dr. Goodman. Thank you. Dave, that's great. Um, I just want to start with some questions. Anybody have on the board? Any questions about that? I, I just had a question um, for the supervisor of student services. So can you just talk a little bit more about that? Yes. I'm wondering, didn't we have a, a supervisor at one point? I don't know. It was before my time on the board. Did so we we're looking at specifically for next year. I'm not sure that this will always be a program that we will have in the district. But we have found that there are some students who really are struggling due to learning loss of COVID and due to as um, Ms. Gardier has said in so many meetings that she's seen in her hospital also that more students are really having emotional issues with everything that's happening around COVID and you know let's face it it was really very frightening for some kids and some families and um, this is a person who will work very closely we have wonderful um, in, uh, guidance counselors and social workers in our school bill I'm not social workers sorry and psychologists in our buildings but not everybody is able to do the kinds of things that an administrator can do um, and he and he or she will be able to go into you know houses meet parents at night on their own turf if needed um, to really be able to help mitigate the experiences between school home and also any agencies that we can hook um, these students and these families up with we want to make sure that we provide the best support and that's why we're using some of our federal funds for this also um, we see it as a one-year position to look at again and see if we need that kind of help um, for our kids after next year as we're getting back to normalcy and if we do how would we we would support that in the the, the proposed budget for next the following year yeah next we have year, to look at what we have and if we need that or if we want to go in a different way but we're feeling you know we have done a lot of work i give our teachers and support staff mm -hmm. a lot of credit um, but we also want to make sure that there is an administrator that can do even more than um, than we may be able to do in you know within the time frame. It would be a partnership for sure because we do have um, some people who really do do a lot of those things also within the district. Okay. I'm sure the volume we have supersedes our capacity to meet their needs right now. Just from what like uh, I've seen at work and us trying to locate um, qualified mental health professionals is become a real, real challenge. It is a real challenge. Yeah. And, um, and, and a lot of families, not just the kids, but even families have been challenged by this time, either financially, emotionally, um, helping kids mitigate the learning loss also with our school administrators working side by side and our learn all our pupil service staff. Because that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that this wouldn't be a one-year proposition. This, you know, it, we were in this moving into three years. So I'm thinking that they would need to. That would be a position that would need to be maintained further than just one year. Yes, so, most, most likely. Yeah. But we will see how it goes. Okay. I mean, we do have. Yeah, we have. We don't know the long-term effects of all Absolutely. of this. Actually, right. we, have you know, to we don't know what's going to come right. out with some kids exactly. later. Right. You know, I, I think that we can't um, underestimate how this how this how it, no matter how great our teachers and support right. staff was, what this how this felt like for students and some students are struggling with other issues also. It's sure. not just COVID. But when you compound that, that makes it even more. Um, I think it makes it different than all the other years as a school district as we deal with with issues with kids. Mm -hmm. What about the uh, sorry? No, you go? no, no. Give no. Um, the um, I can't remember the title. Assistant director for special ed. Is that the same person? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's okay. Yeah. So they're going to also assist. It's just going to be one Sweeney. person. It's one person. It's one person. A little tired tonight. Amy, okay. So. <laughs> I am paying attention, trying to. You got it. <laughs> and they also they'll also support Dr. Sweeney. And also support Dr. Sweeney. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Um, just on that note, um, and thank you. That was a great presentation. Um, excellent. I love the charts and the <laughs> bar graphs. Um, one and of the yours. things with the COVID, and we talk about um, things that lie ahead. One of them being gaps, right? 
developmental gaps. There could be uh, obviously, obviously academic gaps from especially maybe the younger ones uh, with language, speech and language. I'm curious about that COVID money. Where did that, because I know that, that, that based on how many students or there was a formula, where is that? Where is that in the budget? That was how much did we get for that money? I guess is my first question. So that's not in our general fund budget. Okay. It's accounted for separately outside of the general fund, um, and we got we received um, a few rounds of funding. So last year we received about eighty four thousand okay. dollars that we spent um, mostly to fund the split classrooms at Cottle. Mm -hmm. um, how we had to have extra aids for that. Mm -hmm. Um, and then this year we received um, two other COVID relief funding from the federal government. One is um, called the CRRSA, the Coronavirus Response and Relief Act. Mm -hmm. That's about a hundred and I want to say thirty-nine thousand, um, and that is funding. Um, there were some expenses we had when we had to move the classrooms, so mm -hmm. some of that was used for that. And there are some positions funded out of there um, for um, our lunch service, and we had. So we had to extra. have extra staff for lunch. Mm -hmm. yeah. We had to have extra staff for when kids were coming in um, to check. Remember when we were checking to see mm -hmm. if they had their forms that they had yeah. with them, that they checked it all off. Um, lunch, I think, was a big one. Um, and the other funds were used for um, to close the gap in learning, where we made our, I did speak about it. Yeah, you yeah. did, you did. It um, so we did make a before and after school tutoring program. It was mm -hmm. great that we were able to partner. It's like a community program with mm -hmm. ECAP and mm -hmm. also with the public library. And we also um, will be continuing those programs next year, both at Coddle and the Middle School. And that money would be used for that. And that so money would be used for that. Because yeah. you only have that so money for a certain account amount of time. That you, okay. Yeah. 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 Yes. But we really tried, you know, we had, we were so, um, so aggressive at bringing students in that mm -hmm. we had, we really needed movers to move furniture right. and, and tables out of right. the classrooms. Mm -hmm. And because we, we felt it was so the important that they were in person, the auditorium mm -hmm. where we ripped out the chairs and all of that, we need people to do that. Um, and we also um, really focused on learning loss. The rest of the money, it was really focused on tutoring, the, the, um, to give the kids extra support for what they lost. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. The other um, comment that I just want to make, you know, the fund balance, when we talk about taking that money and, you know, using it, right, to balance the budget, um, you know, one of the goals as a as a board that we have is to not keep having that number creep up. So that was helpful to see that chart. Yeah. I'm curious um, in terms of every year, and you don't have to give me a specific number, but what years do we actually use that? Does that fund balance, like we say, okay, we're going to, we're going to borrow, right? Or we're going to take more savings, like back to balance it out. But then we don't always use it all, right? So that's no. that's another thing I think just to point out that I, you know, budgets of districts are so complicated, and it's not like you think of your house budget where it goes in, mm -hmm. and then you have you know you have these two line items. There's just it's almost um, it's really even hard to to know exactly what your number is going to look like. But I think we've done a good job of not going way up and always mm -hmm. having a reserve there. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I remember the years of we're cutting a bus, what are we taking away? Right. You know, That's all those right. years of just, and mm -hmm. now we're sitting here saying, look at all these programming, um, you know, to the credit of the staff, of Dr. Goodman and, and all the teachers and staff that are taking on these projects. So I'm excited. I think this budget is a, is really a, um, it's a budget that looks ahead and it works mm -hmm. on all of our goals. So thank you for that. I know that was great. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay. So, uh, great. So we're going to move along here uh, to our first recognition of the audience. And that is going to be on agenda item only. Right, do we, we hit everything? Okay. Anyone? Anyone? First, what do you have to do? Okay. Oh, yes. Oh, we're going to be one second. No, no, it's yeah. on wheels. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> musical podium oh, tonight. No, 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 no. You know, you're good. It's on. It's it's pretty simple. Just want to make sure. Gary, am I good? Okay. Just give me a favor. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Hi, everyone. I'm Susan Mealy. I'm the PTA president. Um, so much to unwrap here. This was a wonderful presentation. And um, either I see nothing objectionable. I can't imagine anybody would look at this and find fault. And I just want to say, as a parent, 
I'm just, um, you know, in awe of how this district gets better each year. And, you know, you, you keep innovating and expanding. And I now have high school kids, and the, the district is so much better than it was when we first started. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate all the thought that you put into this and creativity. So thank you. Um, I want to give the PTA report. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on with us as well. Um, our math and science committee um, was funded the team t-shirts for the science olympiad participants uh, at the request of the um, faculty advisors uh, mrs ferguson and mr greco so um, we were very happy to do that and proud of our team i want to point out that today is the deadline for fifth grade yearbook ads i see some eyes popping already deadline <laughs> so if you have a fifth grader and you want to submit an ad to the yearbook please do that tonight and tomorrow the cost of the yearbooks goes up so the early bird rate of purchase for purchasing coddle yearbooks ends tomorrow um, but do note that fifth grade families get their own yearbook complimentary so there you don't need to purchase it if you have a fifth grader so that's uh, that uh, update on the yearbook. And then our um, March is National Reading Month, and our PARP committee is celebrating with a calendar full of activities happening throughout the month. We have a bunch of spirit days where kids are asked to dress in their, as their favorite character and so forth, so a lot of fun things. And we also have two virtual author visits scheduled. One is this Wednesday with Tracy Baptiste, the author of The Jumbies for grades three to five. And then on March 24th, we have Alyssa Cappuccilli, I hope that's how you pronounce her name, who is the author of the Biscuit series. Um, and that'll be for grades K to two. Um, we're launching a new initiative that I'm super excited about because the PTA continues to expand our presence at the middle school and high school. Um, the middle school committee is offering Friday fun nights there are going to be three different ones starting, I believe the dates are March 25th for 6th grade, April 1st for 7th grade, and April 8th for 8th grade. And these will be two-hour events where um, students are invited to come to the school, and the PTA is going to have stuff like pizza and fun activities planned. And so I'm really happy that we're going to have some spirit, um, spirit evenings for our kids. Uh, our um, student support committee is hosting a webinar for families on March 29th called Finding Success with ADHD, Autism, and Dyslexia, where three panelists, um, adult professionals who have um, these conditions, will represent how they live with these uh, disorders. And so that we expect that to be very inspirational. Girls on the Run is starting their practices later this month. Um, the PTA nominating committee will soon be seeking applications for our vacant positions for next year. Um, so I hope everybody will be on the lookout for that and start submitting because we're always looking for new people. And lastly, I ask everyone to save the date for two other upcoming PTA programs. On Thursday, April 28th, will be the PTA spring general meeting. Uh, where every, which is open to everybody, and we're going to include a guest speaker who will educate uh, families on um, promoting executive functioning for their children. And then lastly, in lieu of our usual spring social event, this year we're going to do something different. Our Ways and Means Committee is hosting a parents' night out on Friday, May 13th, which is a much more casual, low-key affair, and details will follow. But please save that date of Friday, May 13th. Great. I think that's it. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Great program. Thank you very much, Ms. Melia. Thank you for the shirts for the Olympia, the Olympia oh, team. Yeah. They were very excited. <laughs> that's great. Okay. Thank you. All right. So we're going to move along to our consent agenda. Oh, wait, oh. You have else. oh I'm so sorry. Oh, oh. sorry. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, know. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's pure out of nowhere. Um, Allison Halloran, 115 Middle Road, uh, Middleton Place. Sorry, Middle Road was like 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just wanted to make a, a couple of comments. The field idea that you guys have that you're partnering with Iona, 
for the baseball field. I'm so happy to hear that somebody has finally decided to do that. My one concern is, though, that those two fields are in really poor condition and not ready to be played on. So I'm wondering who is going to be responsible for getting them into playable, usable condition. Um, the main baseball field, even the lines for the field are gone. They're completely grown over with grass. So I'm just wondering who is going to be responsible for getting that field ready, especially since practice started today. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also wanted to, can I ask a couple of questions about the budget, even though that wasn't like agenda, or do you want that to wait till the end? Yeah, you can go, you can go ahead. We can ask, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, so my first question is, are we losing anything in order to put all the additions in? Are we like eliminating any classes or um, changing some things? I'm just putting it out there to ask if we're losing um, anything. No, we're not really losing anything. Some of the things we will be losing are the things we put in that we needed for COVID, that those, you know, those were COVID-related staffing that okay. we will be losing. But not like classes, like we're still gonna have introduction to architecture and, and mm -hmm. like we're not, Losing a region level class for an AP or anything. We're, not, we're actually gaining a region <laughs> right, level. Right, I saw class. that. Thank you for that. I know <laughs> that I was not the only parent asking, and I thank know, you. We I appreciate heard, it. And we did. Thank you. Um, next is um, Faith. If you could just clarify, I just want to make sure I got it right. I think I did. But so we have debt services that are ending, and um, we're going to take that money that we would normally budget to have to pay for that debt. And we're going to use it towards the tax cert so that we don't have to use so much of the fund balance. That's correct, right? Okay. Correct. Okay. Um, and then lastly, I just want to thank Dr. Lenahan for being willing to go back into the classroom and start that new class <laughs> for us. I think that's amazing that our principal <laughs> is going to go ahead and go back into the classroom. Yay. Thank you. And it was a great presentation. Thank you so much. Can Thanks somebody so. answer the question about the field? About how that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask Mr. Tobin about okay. that. Okay. I can't answer that right okay. now. Okay. Um, thank you. I, I do know that he is scheduling to go over there and meet with them about, yeah, sure about yeah, it because it is the on the agenda. Of geese mm -hmm. too yeah. Is like yeah. Insane. yeah. And that was when we were looking at the fields. Mm -hmm. We were talking about the condition of the fields because we were using it for lacrosse and for, base, uh, for softball and baseball. So I know that was an, an issue then. Um, so we will definitely, Mr. Tobin will be on it might top be just of a it. weather thing that they're waiting for yeah. it to warm up. But I know that they're not going to be practicing on that until it is ready to go. So that. Yeah, I think okay. Iona is going to be good about that. Too. Yeah. Okay. Anybody it is their there. fields. Right. <laughs> they have right. Who's responsible? They are responsible. So we'll get in touch with them. Okay, great. We, I know Mr. Tobin has, so. Yeah. Thanks. So we'll, we'll uh, to be to be discussed. Anybody else behind the wall there? <laughs> Anybody else there? Behind the book wall? <laughs> Okay. We're good. Robin has a seat. Can see you, somebody else? No. Oh, okay. I'm looking because okay. you can see. This okay. is just for agenda. Okay. okay. Yes. So we're going to move on. Okay. So we're good. All right. Consent agenda. Okay. Next is to approve a consent agenda. Motion to approve the consent agenda items two through nine. Do I have a motion? Cynthia, second. Therese. Discussion. Do have any discussion on that. Okay, all in favor? Okay, and the business of the board. We want to approve a memorandum of agreement. Okay, whereas negotiations have been ongoing between the bargaining team for the Tuckahoe Union Free School District and the bargaining team for Tuckahoe Teachers Association for a successor to the 2020 22 agreement between the parties, and whereas those negotiations have resulted in a tentative agreement, agreement contained in a memorandum of agreement dated March 14, 2022, which has been ratified by the membership of the unit, and whereas the Board of Education of the Tuckahoe Union Free School District has reviewed the terms of the memorandum of agreement and finds that a settlement consistent with the terms contained therein is in the best interest of the district. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Education of Tuckahoe Union Free School District thereby approves and ratifies the terms of an aforesaid memorandum of agreement and thereby authorizes the superintendent of schools and the board president to execute a collective bargaining agreement consistent with the ter terms thereof. Do I have a motion? Therese, second, Cynthia. Um, discussion? Uh, I mean, I just wanted to say thank you to the teachers really for being extremely patient and
flexible and really staying committed to your students and putting that before this I mean it's a long time coming and you guys really deserve everything in there mm -hmm. so Absolutely. thank you Agreed. right and I, I, I'd like just to speak on behalf of uh, Pete wasn't able to be here for he had travel for work but on behalf of Pete and the board um, that we um, this is this is really a um, appreciation um, for the last two years of you know rising to a challenge that n no one could imagine uh, what that would entail and I think that it's not only a recognition of all of the hard work not just teachers but staff and everybody committed mm -hmm. to making it work you know to, to moving moving it forward but then also the expectations that lie ahead and I think that mm -hmm. as a board we're excited because we're bringing in you know Dr. Goodman and and the administration is bringing some really great great programming um, and I think that we know that that's going to be work and we know that teachers are going to as they did the last two years continue to to show us that um, you know the students come first and that they're working hard yeah. to make it happen so thank you, thank you. We really thank do appreciate you. it so thank you I also would like to thank Pete and Laura um, because they were co um, negotiators on this and they were involved from the start on you know getting this whole thing together so thank you You're all right all in favor Oh, do you like? I'm sorry. Yes. Oh, go. Yeah. No. I think yeah. I think yeah. No. Okay. Oh. okay. <laughs> I'm looking over to Rob. All in favor? <laughs> okay. Accept a donation. Whereas the Tuckahoe Union Free School District has been informed of a donation to be made to the Eastchester Women's Club Scholarship at the Tuckahoe High School, and whereas the district would like to accept such donation. It is thereby resolved the Board of Education that the district shall accept the donation from the Women's Club of Eastchester in the amount of $2,000. Do I have a motion? Lori, second. Cynthia, discussion? Well, thank you very much. That is uh, a very generous donation from the uh, Women's Club of Eastchester, so thank you for that. Any other comments? Okay, all in favor? Okay, accept and modify a donation. Whereas, by resolution adopted on August 23, 2021, the Board of Education of the Tuckahoe Union Free School District accepted a donation from Dieter J. Rolfink to establish the Tuckahoe High School Scholarship in honor of Jackie Grill and George Bailey, Tuckahoe High School Class of 1957, which scholarship would be awarded annually in the amount of 1000 and whereas Dieter J. Rolfink seeks to donate additional funds to support the Tuckahoe Scholarship in honor of Jackie Grill and George Bailey. Tuckahoe High School class of 1957 and requests the additional funds to be used to increase the amount of this annual scholarship award from 1,000 to 2,000 and now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Education of Tuckahoe Union Free School District thereby accepts a donation of 10,000 from Dieter J. Rolfink, a 1959 graduate of Tuckahoe High School for the quote, Tuckahoe High School scholarship in honor of Jackie Grill and George Bailey, Tuckahoe High School class of 1957, subject to the condition that this new donation be used to increase the amount of this annual scholarship award from 1,000 to 2,000, and be it further resolved that the terms of the Tuckahoe mm -hmm. scholarship in honor of Jackie Grill and George Bailey, Tuckahoe High School class of 1957, set forth in the August 23rd, 2021 resolution of the Board of Education of Tuckahoe Union Free School District shall remain unchanged and with the exception of the following. One, the annual scholarship award shall increase in, in the amount of 1000 to 2000 and two, if the monies held in the scholarship fund shall be less than 2000 for three consecutive years, the scholarship fund account shall be closed and the monies held in the scholarship account shall be transferred to the high school student activity fund for the general organization, organization scholarship. Do I have a motion? Therese, second. Lori, discussion? Wow, very generous, and thank you very much to that um, Dieter J. Rolfink, it sounds. And he's been uh, since 1957. That's amazing, so thank you very much. Anything you want to say anything about that? I, I could say something yeah. about it. So um, we've already accepted this once before. Mm -hmm. um, in 2021, the district received an email from Mr. Rolfink, a Tuckahoe graduate, wanting to Establish this Tuckahoe High School fund in honor of Jackie Grill and George Bailey, as you said, the class of 1957. In 1956, George Bailey, an African American, decided to run for the position of president of the Tuckahoe High School Student Government Organization, then called the Student Council. Jackie Grill, who would later become Mr. Rolfings, who's giving the donation's wife, looked over all the candidates and became convinced that George was by far the best candidate. As a result, she offered to run his whole election. 
and Jackie persisted in the belief that George was the best candidate and ran such a successful campaign with George that he won the election. And George became the first African American to be elected president of the Tuckahoe High School Council. For the 50th reunion of the class of 1957, Tuckahoe High School erected a plaque honoring this event. At graduation in 2007, both Jackie and George were re reunited and honored for their role in this historic event. And that's why um, that money is going to our students. And I would also like to thank Mr. Rolfing for his generosity and his strong belief in all students and the education of our youth. Thank you. That's great. Great story. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, number four, approve an agenda. Uh, oh, sorry, all in favor. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Robin. Keeping me moving here. Okay. Uh, so number four, approve an agreement. Result that the Board of Education approves an agreement with the Westchester County Board of Elections for voting machines for the May 17th, 2022 school district election. Do I have a motion? Therese, second. Lori, discussion? All in favor? Okay. Number five, approve an agreement. Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Tuckahoe Union Free School District approves and ratifies the real estate license agreement with Iona College for the use of a baseball field at the campus of Iona College located at 171 White Plains Road, Bronxville, New York at a rate of $60 per hour on certain dates in March, April, and May of 2022 for baseball games and lacrosse practices at an amount not to exceed 2280 be it further resolved that the President of the Board of Education and the Superintendent of Schools are, th are hereby individually authorized to and empowered to execute the real estate license agreement with Iona College, and be it further resolved that the superintendent of schools and the business manager authorized and directed to take all actions necessary to affect the purposes of and to cause compliance with the real estate license agreement with Iona College. Do I have a motion? Cynthia, second. Lori, discussion? So this is basically what we were, yeah, so we'll, we'll to, uh, to be we'll, discussed we'll as far as, up yeah, we'll follow up on, with that. On what they're supposed but this to do. is great, not only do we have you know, a new lacrosse team, but we also have new space, which has always been since mm -hmm. yeah. my time, right? Yep. The fields issue. have always just yeah. been such an issue. So thank you yes. for working on that. Yeah. that We've really tried and, you know, Mr. Kilgallen's there. Remember when we, we start, started that <laughs> yeah. whole thing and then, And it know, was a beautiful Mr. field. Tobin, so let's hope they put it back to Since I got it. here, even when yeah. Concordia, yeah. I was like, we need They're always, well, we don't, fields. listen, we're, we yes. are, we have Excellent. one, really, we have one field right now. Mm -hmm. And for, so for all these years to have a new, have a new place for the boys that they're not on the, always down in Parkway over the duck. <laughs> the duck do. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. We, so, thank you. Um, yeah. We are having a partnership with them. We're taking one of their interns for a, as a psychology intern. So it's going to be great. a very a nice, great yeah. give and great take way to with, start a with Iona. So, all right. Great. That's awesome. Okay. All in favor? Okay. Um, number six, approve a termination. Whereas Rita Gentile has been absent on, on a leave of absence for a period of at least one year pursuant to the civil service law 71 and whereas Rita Gentile has been provided a pre-termination pre opportunity to be heard pursuant to 71 of the civil service law and whereas Rita Gentile did not attend the meeting scheduled for her to provide information as allowed for under 71 of the civil service and whereas the Board of Education has reviewed the report of Dr. Amy Goodman, superintendent, and now therefore be it resolved that Rita Gentile's employment as a monitor for the Tuckahoe Union Free School District is thereby terminated pursuant to 71 of the civil service law, subject to the reinstatement rights prov provided for therein, effective the close of business on March 21st, 2022. Do I have a motion? Therese, second. Uh, Cynthia, discussion? Okay, all in favor? Keep raising my hand. Okay. Um, personnel recommendations, accept personnel recommendations, resolve that the Board of Education of the Tucko Union Free School District approves personnel actions A through N as outlined below. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second, Lori? Discussion? Okay. Go I on. actually have one question. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, when we did the um, item L for approved stipends, what is the fitness coach for? Um, this is the fitness coach is to is to work in the in the yeah, fitness in the, center. In the fitness center. Kids, um, oh, just for anyone who wants to go, or no? So they have a tuck fit. It's called, and it's after yeah, school. Yeah, like a is little what, clubs. Almost. Yes, they had oh. it before. Yeah, yeah. there's a club. There's a oh, yeah. I didn't know. So yeah, I was it's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's um, monitored, supervised, and they have background and conditioning, and mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, that's um, great. 
All in favor? Okay. Uh, so that brings us to our second recognition of the audience. Hi. 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 Finally. <laughs> <laughs> now I can come up. Um, Debbie DeFrancisco, I'm the president of the TTA. Thank you for having us. James Moore, sixth grade social studies teacher. Thank you very much for, for having us here today. So I just want to start by saying you all have orchids when you came in today. Um, the reason for that is the orchids in front of you symbolize things. Orchids symbolize beauty, uniqueness, and elegance. And I thought it was very apropos that today we settled a beautiful contract with elegance at every meeting in our very unique community of Tuckahoe. So some of them are white and some of them are purple because the purple and white represents beginnings, new beginnings and peace. And I think that's exactly where mm -hmm. this district is now and where we're headed. So I, I thought that was a nice way to start. If there's some words here I can't pronounce, it's because he wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> I am here. So you'll just have to forgive me. Um, so I want to say thank you to the board, Dr. Goodman, Faith Sparks, and the community for showing the teachers how much you appreciate and recognize the dedication and professionalism, professionalism of all of us. The last year has been crazy, to say the least. It has tested our determination, our steadfastness, and our resolve. As an educational community, we have banded together and overcome each and every adversity with professionalism and with students always in mind. After having such a tumultuous, tumultuous last two years, the last thing anyone wanted to do was negotiate a contract. However, I'm pleased to say that this contract was completed with discussions and with absolute trust. To say that Dr. Goodman, Faye Sparks, Mr. Casson, and Mrs. Banky were more than ready to listen and to negotiate with us does not give them even enough credit. They were active participants in reaching an agreement in a short amount of time. I was told today by Mike Gray um, when we presented to, to the membership that this has never happened in his 15 years here. Um, melding the needs of the district along with the needs of the teachers to keep on doing what they do best, teach. Not using lawyers in the process speaks volumes about the trust and the confidence the board, Dr. Goodman, has for the teachers and the respect and trust that we have for all of you. We are, we are able to reach those common goals and work hand in hand. There is nothing we can't achieve here in Tuckahoe. This is what the Tuckahoe community is all about, working together, facing challenges together, and supporting each other in times of adversity. Once again, it's every teacher's pleasure to be an active member of the Tucko community, and we look so forward to continuing our relationship towards excellence. Thank you all so much. We appreciate all you've done. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank Anyone else coming up, Robin, that you can see? No. no. All right. I think we're good. And that brings us to adjourn the meeting. Do I have a motion? What? What? Second to Raz. All in favor? <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Lori motioned and then to Raz second. All in favor? Okay. Great. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you very Thank much, you. everybody. Thank oh, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.